They've been called God's trophies. In Syria's war, jihadist rebel groups fighting President Assad's regime are increasingly parading their military successes on YouTube. They pose with seized weapons and military equipment to boost their standing and help with funding. The propaganda videos have become a signature of a war fought online as much as in reality. And often, the need for dramatic pictures is more important than the military targets themselves. As our correspondent Kylie Morris now reports. It's the world's first YouTube war. In Syria, hundreds of different rebel groups are competing with each other for cash and recruits fighting their propaganda battle online. The rules have changed. It's no longer just capturing trophies at war. What matters is capturing the trophies on camera and posting them online. Within hours of the conquest of a government airfield, there are already cinematic teasers on YouTube, complete with dramatic soundtrack. To tell the story, the triumph of the Al Fatah Brigade. In military terms, Milik Air Base near Aleppo is of some strategic value, but highly polished video of its capture is treasure indeed. In many cases, it's not for strategic reasons. It's uh, a showcase also for the funders, mainly in the Gulf region, uh, saying that uh, we are capable and, uh, you know, with, with only what we have, this is what you, what, we, what you can get. But if you give us more, you can get more than this. The open spaces of the remote airbase provide the perfect set for a jihadi blockbuster. Increasingly, the jihadist groups favour this kind of location over the cramped street scenes of urban fighting. The Minik base is perfect. Satellite imagery, again accessed on YouTube, provides the intelligence the Al Fatah Brigade needs. <laughs> And so it begins. To open, fighters launch captured Russian-made Grad rockets and mortars. <laughs> to pound the base. <laughs> Inspirational stuff for any would-be fighter. It's probably uh, been used as a recruiting tool uh, for other young people uh, inside Syria and for foreigners, jihadis, who would want to join the uh, battle uh, in Syria. In the story of Minakh, a suicide bomber is cast in the central role. He's a foreign fighter from the Gulf called Moab Abdul Rahim. The booby trap tank he drives packed, they claim, with an extraordinary six tons of explosives, is delivered into the very heart of the compound. In true Hollywood style, the explosion is captured on multiple cameras. What comes next looks like a video game. From the postures the fighters strike, firing their heavy guns and RPGs toward the government tanks, to the plummeting helicopter, the billowing smoke, before the final assault on the airfield headquarters itself. In war online, there's little to distinguish the field of battle from a game you could play at home, and that's no accident. It's another way of saying the regime cannot hurt us in any way. We are the heroes that are going to be killing all the enemy, and the enemy here is the regime, and that's usually the scenario that takes place in a video game. In their game, the jihadis always win but they never reveal what happened exactly to the hundreds of soldiers inside. A single shot hints at a terrible slaughter. Dead jihadi fighters, meanwhile, get their very own memorial video, a martyr's collection, eternally remembered and available online. And for the big ending, trophies. 
The rebels can't fly these captured MiG fighters in Al Jarrah, but they claim them with their prayers. Pictures perpetuate an image of an unstoppable army of God, politically and militarily independent. There's no alternative, they say, but a religious jihad. That is unless you're the wrong kind of Muslim. The Sunni jihadis act out sectarian hatred against President Assad. His father and their Shiite supporters. It's a set piece in virtually every video. For some, it's even become their calling card. After the Midrash battle, we catch a glimpse of a newly made YouTube celebrity, the Egyptian fighter Abu Jandal. His name translates as the killer. And it's a popular theme which plays well to potential Sunni extremist donors. This is the kind of videos where we call it a PR disaster for the rebels. This is the kind of videos that actually the regime is using in order to say that this is a terrorist revolution and it's not people's revolution. All sides in this multi-platform battlefield must compete for support online. Never has the power of images divided so keenly who wins and who loses. The jihadis must hope if they fly their flags dramatically enough online, they'll take root in the soil of Syria forever. Kylie Morris reporting.